as customs, you are likely to be asked when you are filling in forms, trying to apply for healthcare assistance jobs in the UK, either within the UK or from overseas. These are the questions that I'm going to be addressing in this video. Hi, hi, hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Rio. And if you gain one or two things from this channel, hit the like button. Also, click on the bell button to get notifications of new videos. Thank you. Hi, hi, hi. Good evening. So, tonight I'm going to be talking about questions you are going to be asked when you are applying for health care assistance jobs in the UK. So, the very first question you are going to be asked is, are you a current employee? of the hospital that you are applying to okay so of which the answer to that will be no then you're going to be asked to choose your immigration status you're going to be given different options are you a british citizen do you have right to work in the uk are you an irish national have you obtained settled status in the uk or pre-settled status through the eu settlement scheme are you a Swiss national? Do you have indefinite leave to remain? Do you have a skilled worker visa that is sponsored by a current employer you wish to switch to um, a different tier 2 visa under a different employer? Are you a British national overseas visa holder? Um, do you have a tier 1 visa? That's the visa category for highly skilled migrants programs. Do you have a tier 2 general work visa? Are you an overseas qualified nurse or midwife in a uh, supervised practice placement in the UK? Youth mobility scheme visa tier 5, temporary worker visa or family visa or a dependent or spouse visa. Are you a student in the UK? Do you have a standard visitor visa? And do you not have any right at all to work in the UK? So, of which, if you're coming from abroad, the answer to that would be, I do not have a right or visa to work in the UK. So, they will then go ahead and ask you further questions. You know, these questions will be about your 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 person, you know, your, your personal life. Uh, questions about your your name so it would be questions about your name uh your date of birth your your marital status uh hi 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 so this is the video in which i said i would be talking about the application questions in full so Let's start with your educational and professional qualification. So in that case, when you're asked this question, you need to put your qualification, which would be, for instance, if you went to uni, whatever you studied BSA in, like mine is medicine and surgery. So I would put my qualification as MBBS, Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery, okay? So yours can be anything. It can be BSc Business Administration, something like that. Your place of study will be asked. Your grade or your results. So if it's a pass, you put a pass. If it's a fail, you put a fail. Then the year that you obtained that degree, you need to put it in. And then you arrange it from the most recent one. For instance, if you went to uni, as the last you know qualification that you got you put uni if it's a master's you put the master's first because that's postgraduate so then you you get to a session where your relevant training courses that you've attended would, would be required so here you put care courses that you've done online uh, you put that here uh, so that would be and any of the care courses that you've done online. If you have uh, MVQ level 2 or level 3, this would be a good place to put that. So, 
uh, then after this, uh, you can put the names of the courses that you've done. Uh, the training provider, you put the duration, how long it took you to complete the course, and you put the year you completed it. I'm assuming most people would, you know, they would just be completing their care courses this year, or maybe some have done it last year. Okay, so you then go to the next session, which is membership of membership of professional bodies so if you're registered with any professional body in your own country you can post that like i am registered with the medical and dental council of nigeria you can put that if you're a nurse you can put your nursing the nursing council in nigeria so um, if you don't belong anywhere just put not required for this post yeah so you then go to previous NHS service, yes or no. If you've not been in the NHS, you don't need to put anything. So, previously we were talking about um, NHS service. So, if you've been working for the NHS, you put it there, and how long you've been in service. If you've never worked to the NHS, you just move on. So, next you go to employment history. You put the name of your employer, that's the name of your company. Employer address, that's the full address. The, the, the number, the flat, or the, the, the um, building name, the street name, the town name, the state, or the province, or the county, and then the country. So you put the type of business. If it's healthcare, you put if it's a hospital. Um... You talk about who you're you've been reporting to maybe it's the lead nurse or the doctor or the senior carer or whoever telephone you put their contact details you put your job title okay so if you've been working as a healthcare assistant you put it there you put the start date you know the month the year make the dates full talk about your grade your salary period of notice reason for leaving so if it's your most recent employment or you're currently employed you don't need to put a reason for leaving because it's not applicable if however you've left the job then you need to put you know maximum of i think 50 words or so reason that reason why you left okay could be you found another job you know you relocated to a different place but putting a reason such as you didn't like the workplace or the employers treated you badly is not really acceptable you put a brief description of your duties and your responsibilities don't make it too long just six to eight duties would be good per job so this is for each of the jobs you've done if there are any gaps in your employment you put you know the number of gaps in your employment if there are any gaps and then you move on to supporting information so what are you going to put here what are you going to put in supportive information so you talk about yourself okay so you talk about yourself you talk about um your values talk about how your values are suited to the hospital's values or the trust values you talk about anything you've not talked about before you know information about yourself don't duplicate information that you've put before okay so i'll continue with the next video stay tuned so what will you put as your supporting information you have to demonstrate that you've read the person's specification of the job and how you meet the essential and desirable criteria for the particular post. For instance, if the essential criteria says you need good communication skills and interpersonal skills, you just say you've sat the IS UKVI general and you had one seven plus. And you can demonstrate this with your results. So you can put that, okay? Um, in your supporting information, if you have a driving license, you know, um, a UK driving license, you can put that as well, okay? Um, if they've asked for uh, maths and English GCSEs, uh, which we call GCE back in Nigeria, 
different name there are different names for it in different countries you put that as well if you've got your additional care certificates that you've not talked about before you can put this as well if you've not fully covered that section in your previous uh, uh, columns or your previous sections that you filled you have to include the reasons why you've applied for the job you know what kind of person you are a passionless person you're a caring person you have sympathy for other people you can put things like that you can highlight your strengths and your talents you have good IT skills things like that other things that you feel that personally you can offer what is unique to you that sets you apart from your peers you can don't say the same thing that you've said before in your application avoid repeating yourself if you've provided a piece of information in your application previously don't repeat it again in the supporting information hi hello again so i'm going to be talking about the further questions that will be asked and how to tackle them so in this one we have have you received your covid vaccination okay so <laughs> that is compulsory you have to have received your covid vaccination from i think april 2022 so the options are i've received my covid vaccination i've not received it but i'm willing to do so i'm medically exempt from are you exempt from having covid vaccination hmm, that's weird i am not and do not wish to have a covid 19 vaccination if you pick this last option, I am not to have it and I do not wish to have it. Just know that your application is going to be null and void, okay? Because if you're going to be working as a healthcare worker in the UK, you need to be fully vaccinated. Um, so, in this case, yeah, you pick what? And you move on. The armed forces. I think I've mentioned that before. You can say I've worked with them. I've not worked with them. I do not wish to disclose this information. Whatever it is. You pick and you move on. So the part I've not talked about is um, the criminal part. So it's quite extensive. Um, if you're in the UK, you're going to be needing a DBS. You know that for sure. But if you're outside the UK, you need a police report. So, um, enhanced disclosure may include other relevant information like non-conviction information that is held on police databases. That's just at the discretion of the police or the chief constable of the relevant police force depending on the country where you're coming from um if you have a criminal record and you're unsure about what might be revealed about you as part of a dbs check or the type of information you should consider declaring and completing the form there is a guidance. The link is http colon slash slash hub dot unlock dot org dot uk. Unlock is U N L O C K. Then after the UK you have slash knowledge base slash field train F I L T E R I N G I fin simple i think guide slash hmm. so cautions convictions what have you okay so you are going to be asked you know about criminal convictions hi 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 thanks everyone for watching so far thanks for your likes thanks for subscribing to my channel Thanks for clicking on the bell button, the notifications button.
thank you very much if you're new to my channel please click on the subscribe button so you get videos whenever i post them about job availabilities in the uk information about immigration information about life in the uk in one of the recent applications the recent um job adverts i came about um i noticed that they were asking for covid vaccination um so covid vaccination is very important so last but not the least uh let's talk about references so make sure that the person you're putting or the people you're putting they put in a good word for you okay don't put people that write rubbish in your references put their names their job title whether they are your employer or not how you know them how long you've known them with full dates the company type of business contact details email addresses phone numbers their title whether it's mr miss doctor pastor whatever make sure everything is complete and then their email addresses their phone numbers their full the full address of your company all those kind of things once again i really appreciate your likes your shares please follow me on tiktok follow me on instagram follow me uh on facebook if you can i've got a page at the slay dog on all social media platforms click on the notification button subscribe to my channel and i'll see you in the next video bye for now